Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. This is a presentation of Healthy Connections. Today we'll be spotlighting a key Healthy Connections partner, the Maternal Opioid Medical Support Program, or MOMS. We're so happy that so many of you have joined us today for this special presentation. Please note that today's presentation is being recorded for future reference. If you have any questions or comments for our keynote presenter, you can submit them using the chat or Q&A feature in your WebEx player at any time during today's presentation. We'll get to as many questions as time will allow for today. Our keynote presenter today is Jessica Offont. She is the Moms Program Nurse Manager and Moms Program Nurse Practitioner at the Hoops Family Children's Hospital at Cabell Huntington Hospital. Secondary presenter is me, Shane and Wright. I'm the Media Marketing Workgroup Co-Chair for Healthy Connections and also serve as Director of Innovation for an organization who's a member of Healthy Connections called Quality Insights. If you're not familiar with Healthy Connections, this is a group of organizations that helps pregnant women, mothers, and their families navigate treatment and support services available in our community. Healthy Connections receives referrals from community partners and through a new online referral system that's available on our website at www.healthyconnectionswv.org. Healthy Connections' primary function comes through its family navigators who provide the foundation for the group's efforts. The family navigators work with a small caseload, they develop a unique plan for each client and child, provide assessments to identify needs and coordinate services, and connect individuals with credentialed peer review coaches, recovery coaches rather. As I mentioned, Healthy Connections is a group of many organizations throughout the Huntington area, more than 25 of them, in fact. You'll see many of the member organizations on your screen here, which include Marshall University uh, Departments, Lily's Place, Marshall Health, the Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine, River uh, Valley Child Development Services, Valley Health Systems, Prestera, ProAct, and much, much more. We are so happy that so many organizations have come come together with this shared mission and vision of helping pregnant women, mothers, and families navigate the wide range of recovery services available in the Huntington area. I mentioned before that I'm with Quality Insights. Our role in Healthy Connections is to provide marketing, branding, and web infrastructure development services for the group. We also help coordinate partnerships, create printed and virtual online resources, stage media events known as Earn Media, advertise for the group, and produce webinars just like the one you're on today. With that, it is my great pleasure to turn the floor over to our keynote speaker today, Jessica Offont. Jessica? Thank you, Shannon. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jessica Offont. I am the uh, nurse practitioner and nurse manager of the MOMS program, as well as the nurse manager of the neonatal therapeutic unit here at Cabell. The way the MOMS program originally started was we realized that there was a gap in care in regards to postpartum women. What we were seeing was women would come in, they would not be offered treatment right away, although at the delivery of their baby, it's a very vulnerable time. So we came in August of 2018 was when we first saw our very first patient and our goal is to meet with all postpartum women here at Cabell Huntington Hospital and, and offer them some, site, some type of treatment support. We are located on the third floor of Cabell, right between the mother-baby unit and the neonatal therapeutic unit in hopes of making it as convenient as possible. Most moms who have a history of substance use disorder or a current substance use disorder most of their babies, if they are getting MAT treatment or if they're not in treatment yet, will have to stay on the NTU. So our location was determined 
with that in mind in hopes that we wouldn't have to take moms away from their babies for treatment. We would let that they would have the opportunity to spend more time with their baby and get their treatment in the same place. Our mission is to meet the healthcare needs and build a foundation for recovery for postpartum women living with the chronic disease of addiction by bridging the gap between their behavioral health and medical health care needs in a supportive, compassionate, and encouraging environment. We have a nurse practitioner, um, myself, or we just hired a new one. Her name is Courtney Wellman. She will address any medical needs that the moms have while they're here in addition to their medication-assisted treatment needs, um, any women's health care, we address birth control, long-term birth control, if that's something they're interested in. We try to, we refer them to primary care providers, but we try to provide those same services while they're here because they don't always have transportation and it's difficult for them to get to other appointments. So we try to make it as much of a one-stop shop as we can. Our goal is to provide the services, support, and resources necessary to produce healthy women, healthy mothers, and healthy families. We know that it's not just about the mom and it's not just about the baby. If we can't form, help them with the bonding between each other, neither one of them is going to be very successful. If we help them to recover in the same environment and give them the resources, whether it's medically, behavioral health or socially, they do, they have much better outcomes. Um, we work with the neonatal therapeutic unit and Lily's Place. As I mentioned before, we try to decrease interruptions in visitation schedules and feeding schedules. We try to give mom and baby as much time together as they can. Once the baby is discharged from the hospital or Lily's place, we allow them to bring their babies with them to group therapy or individual therapy, whatever appointments they may have, so that we're not adding that as an additional barrier. In addition to the MOMS program, I'm gonna give a little blip about the NTU that's here, in, here at Cabell. We're an 18-bed unit that started in 2012 um, in response to the opioid crisis in our area. Our NICU was overcrowded and we weren't able to take premature babies. We were having to send babies away. And so we developed specifically the NTU for this population of prenatally exposed babies. I've talked about a lot of this already. The treatment team for the MOMS program, it is a nurse practitioner, myself or Courtney Wellman. We also have a licensed professional counselor. Her name is Rachel Goddard. And then we have a medical director, which is Dr. Kelly Cummings, which is over our program. In addition to that, we look at MOMS treatment team as her baby's treatment team, as well as the MOMS treatment team. We try to work together to get a health plan, a behavioral health plan, and a social plan that allows them success once they leave here. So we talk with the pediatricians and neonatologists on the NTU, social workers, caseworkers. We all try to work together to get the best treatment plan for both, both mom and her baby to ensure success. The only difference between the NTU and Lily's Place as far as the collaboration with the MOMS program is that Lily's Place is located off-site. We try to do the same if moms have any babies there. We try to ensure that we get their appointments done and we try to group them together as much as possible to leave mom time to be with her baby. services that we provide in the MOMS program. I have listed some of these previously. We do the medication-assisted treatment. That includes the Subutex or Suboxone or Vivitrol. We do not do methadone here. Our counselor will provide the individual counseling, group counseling. We do case management. Pastoral care is offered as well as treatment referrals. The individual counseling with our program, and I may have addressed this somewhere later in the slides, we require for our moms an hour, one hour twice a month. So two hours of individual counseling a month, 
they will have one hour of group therapy weekly, and then they will have a medication management appointment with a nurse practitioner on the same day as group counseling. Pastoral care, the need for that or the, the desire for that is assessed on their intake so that we can see what type of therapy or counseling mom is interested in and what she would best help her to obtain her goals. With the medication-assisted treatment, it is not just the medication. Suboxone is not the treatment. Subutex is not the treatment. Vivitrol will not solve this. The behavioral health and the counseling is a huge piece to the success of our moms. So this is what I had mentioned earlier. Everybody has a medication management appointment a week. Every week with group and med management, we will discuss everybody gets a drug screen. We do witness drug screens weekly, and then once a month we'll do the random screenings. We discuss and treat any health, social, any medication concerns, anything like that during the medication management. We do the MAT prescription. We offer the long-acting contraception or any type of contraception that mom is interested in. We review and revise the treatment plan at every visit, and we address any other patient concerns that they bring up at their visit. Again, every mom in our program is required to attend two 60-minute individual counseling sessions per month and one 60-minute group counseling session per week. This is never decreased, but we can increase it depending on mom's needs. Again, we do the weekly drug screening. We do randoms as needed. The frequency, like I said, the frequency of appointments will never decrease, but it is always subject to an increase depending on the patient's progress and what they need. We, when we originally started, we only served moms up to 90 days. What we found with our first group of graduates was that at 90 days, we were really just getting to know our moms and our moms are really just getting to know us. So they were just starting to trust us, to confide in us, to use the tools that they were given. So we extended our program to six months. And since then, we have had a lot more success as far as building relationships, building rapport. Um, it has been, it's been very successful for our program and for our moms. After six months, we don't just drop our patients. We make sure they get into a long-term treatment program, um, whether that is ProAct, Prestera, anywhere. It depends on where the patient lives, what type of program they want. Do they like larger programs or more intimate programs? So before the patient is discharged, we schedule them for their appointment with the other treatment programs so they don't get, they don't get lost. This discharge process does start on admission to the mom's program, not just with the treatment program, but with all of the social services that they'll be needing as well. We always, with every patient on their admission to the mom's program, when they do their intake, we put them in contact with the Healthy Connections Family Navigator. Um, they are invaluable in the treatment of our moms. Our moms wouldn't make it to treatment because of transportation issues. Um, some of them don't have housing, supplies for themselves or their baby. Um, we use the family navigators a lot to help our moms navigate the system, the CPS system. And, um, to, let me back up here. Any people who qualify for the moms program, the only qualification is that you have to be within six months, you have to be within six months postpartum and have a history of addiction or current or past. If you feel like you need the behavioral health piece and no medication, medication is not required. Only the therapy, the counseling is the required piece. But as long as the woman is within six months postpartum, she is eligible for admission to the MOMS program. Uh, referrals, we take referrals in a variety of ways. Here at Cabell, um, if there is ever any positive urine drug screen results on labor and delivery when the mom comes in to have her baby, we get consults for all of those moms. We meet with them, see where they're at, see what their needs are. Um, we offer them treatment, be it in the mom's program, residential treatment, or whatever they're interested in. We try to get them in what they need and what they want. We do not have to have a physician referral. 
Um, we meet with a lot of moms, specifically from the MARC program. And they will say, we want to stay in the MARC program until we finish our, until we graduate, and then we'd like to transfer to the MOMS program. So sometimes, six weeks down the road, we'll just get a telephone call from a mom asking how to do an intake. We get her scheduled and get her in here. So self-referrals are fine. Anybody can call. Nobody has to have a particular title. Um, just call the number on the screen, 304-399-1565, and we'll get you scheduled for an intake. Currently, we do not have a waiting list. Um, we will take up to 30 patients at a time. We average about between 15 to 20 is our average. Um, again, I talked about the Family Navigator. Um, we use them, we utilize them a lot. They are very valuable to our moms and a very, very important piece of their treatment program. We provide referrals to any services that we can't do and that the patient and their family needs, whether it's social referrals, um, we help with clothing, we'll give vouchers, we will refer to primary care physicians, um, infectious disease, or any, anything like that that our patients need, we'll refer them to. Spouses, spouses, significant others, friends, family members, if they are, um, if they have a history of substance use disorder, we will try to get them into treatment if that's something they're interested in as well. And that is about all I have for you. And I'll turn it back over to Shannon. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much, Jessica. Great information about the MOMS program. I know I learned a lot about it. I'm sure everyone else did as well. And I'm already starting to see a few questions coming in to our chat and Q&A feature here. So we'll start with those. If you have a question or a comment for Jessica, please go ahead and submit that now. Our first question asks, is this program just for West Virginia residents? What if someone lives in surrounding counties or in Ohio or Kentucky? We will take any mom. All she has to do is be postpartum and have substance use disorder. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, anywhere that you don't, they don't care to drive here, we will take them. Excellent. Uh, another good question we have here, what is the cost of the MOMS program? Um, most of our MOMS are Medicaid patients and it is completely covered by Medicaid. Okay. Um, next question asks, does the hospital provide transportation assistance for mom's participants if they aren't at Lily's place? The hospital does not provide transportation. If, if a mom is at Lily's place, Lily's place personnel provides the transportation to get here um, to the mom's program. But we use our family navigators a lot when it comes to transportation and they help with um, they get bus passes, they can do gas cards sometimes. We, we utilize them a lot for transportation. And also, um, West Virginia Medicaid specifically pays for Logisticare. So they, that's a company that will help with medical appointments. They transport a lot of our patients that live in more rural areas here for their appointments and it's paid for by Medicaid. All right, uh, next question asks, does the MOMS program offer parenting classes? We currently do not offer parenting classes. Um, again, I will have to defer to our family navigators as they do most of our social pieces. Um, CPS will do the parenting classes. We found with a lot of our moms, they're required to do certain classes. Um, with CPS, but the MOMS program itself does not do parenting classes currently. Another person asks, does the MOMS program have a peer recovery coach? We, Marshall Health has um, two peer recovery coaches that they have kind of, I don't want to say designated, but we have two that we're able to utilize through Marshall Health on the NTU as well as the MOMS program. Okay. 
Uh, oh, here's a good question that rolled in. Um, what if a mom's mother misses her weekly medication management appointment or hour-long counseling? It varies. It depends on that specific patient, um, what their history with us has been. Um, we do know if a patient no-shows, meaning they don't call to cancel or call to reschedule, that does technically count as a negative mark, but they are not automatically dismissed. We are more than willing to reschedule patients. Um, we just, as long as they make it up, we make sure they have what they need. Okay, um, this person asks, if a mom's participant needs to go out of town, can she still go and miss an appointment or counseling session or get her MAT while she's out of town? We have had that happen a couple times, and the moms that have had to go out of town, they let us know beforehand um, there is a life outside of here, and we know that everybody has other responsibilities and they like to get away. So yes, we will work with we will work with moms that have to go out of town. We won't we will not let anybody go without their medications just because something comes up. Excellent. Uh, this question, okay, here's a good one. If someone declines the mom's program initially, can she still participate if she changes her mind down the road? Absolutely. We have that happen quite a bit. Um, like I said, we talk to most of our moms here on mother baby, and a lot of times they tell us no. They don't know us. A stranger just walked in the room and offered them treatment. Um, so they're a little leery at first, understandably. So absolutely, a mom can get in anytime. All she has to do is call, even if she is previously declined. In addition, we've had a couple moms who have gotten discharged from the mom's program um, because of non-compliance, and we have allowed them to, after 30 days, they can reapply for um, getting readmitted into the MOMS program, and we have done that as well. Okay. Uh, here's a question that asks, what if a mom delivers at another hospital or is new to the area? Can they do a self-referral? Absolutely. You're not required to have a baby here at Cabell, Lily's Place, the NTU. As long as you're within six months postpartum, you can make a self-referral. Okay. Uh, this person asks, do you have brochures about the MOMS program? We do. I have um, several here at Cabell on the NTU and in the MOMS program. If anybody needs any, just let me know and I will get them out. Excellent. And last but not least, we just have a comment here for you, Jessica. This okay. person says, thank you for this very informative session. I had no idea this program existed. Well, that's why we did this. <laughs> Great. Well, I believe that wraps up the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Jessica, I'd like to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come and talk with us and learn so everyone can learn more about the MOMS program. And uh, as we mentioned, this webinar is being recorded and will be available at healthyconnectionswv.org indefinitely. So uh, thanks again for joining us today, Jessica. Thank you very much. And to wrap up today's webinar, one of the things that people always ask us here in Healthy Connections in each of our sessions is, hey, how can I help with this? Well, here are a few ideas uh, right here on your screen. If you're not already a member, we would love for you to join Healthy Connections and offer your perspective, input, and expertise at our monthly face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, those take place at River Child Valley Child Development Services. That's at 611 7th Avenue in downtown Huntington. And they're always the second Thursday of each month at 11 a.m. As you may recall, um, we mentioned before, I'm the chair of Healthy Connections Media Marketing Work Group. Uh, our Media Marketing Work Group always eat, meets one hour before Healthy Connections monthly meetings. That's at 10 a.m. So uh, you're welcome to join one or both. 
We would love to have you present there. Any and all are welcome at our meetings, and everyone's perspective just makes the coalition that much stronger. So uh, please consider joining us. If you're not on our mailing list, uh, reach out to myself, Crystal Welch, anyone involved with the group, including our co-chairs, uh, Rebecca and Lynn. Uh, they will make sure you get added to the list so you'll be notified of upcoming meetings, receive the agendas, and the minutes from the previous Healthy Connections meeting. Another way you can help, and that is by reducing the stigma associated with substance use disorder. There are specific negative speech aspects that are very stigmatizing and are harmful to the recovery process. Healthy Connections has a wide range of resources to help you learn about the language of recovery, including pocket cards and online videos at healthyconnectionswv.org that uh, talk about stigma words and how we can in inadvertently stigmatize people with substance use disorder by no fault of our own. So make sure to be educated about that at our website, healthyconnectionswv.org. We also have General Healthy Connections Coalition rack cards uh, that we would be more than happy to provide you in mass for your highly trafficked areas to increase our service reach. Maybe your front waiting area or lobby would have a good spot for that, or maybe you're frequently out in the community and would like to share this information. Just ask any of us and we will get you five, 10, 500, whatever you need. We have plenty of cards because the most important thing is making sure that we can help support mothers and families with substance use disorder. Also linked from our website is our Healthy Connections uh, Facebook page. We have a suite of social media along with that. We would love for you to like and share us on Facebook. We are very fortunate that many of our members are very active on Facebook, and uh, we'll be happy to share your events as well. So if you have uh, an initiative, an event, or anything you would like to get the word out about, just let us know at Healthy Connections. In addition to our Facebook page, we also have our Get Connected e-newsletter which is distributed on a quarterly basis by Quality Insights, and periodic morning memos as well. That may have been how you found out about today's webinar from our morning memo. If so, and you're receiving it, thank you for opening that, and please feel free to forward those messages to anyone you like. If you're not receiving our e-newsletter or morning memos, uh, let us know. We'll get you on the list for that as well. So uh, here at Healthy Connections, it's really just all about making connections and that's why it's so important that we consistently keep these lines of communication open and use every channel we can to make sure everyone is informed about the wealth of services available to those in need of recovery services in the Huntington and greater tri-state area. So to wrap up, uh, we would like to remind you that there will be a post-event feedback link when you exit out of WebEx. WebEx is going to give you a little warning message that you're going to an external website. Don't worry about that. That's just our post-event feedback. It's really important if you have a few moments that you could uh, fill out. It's just about four or five questions uh, asking you about today's webinar and about future topics that you would like to learn about. So uh, when you exit out of your player, uh, even though it's going to warn you, you're going to an external site, it's all fine. It's just a quick assessment that will only take you a few moments to complete, and we ask that you please do that if time will allow. Uh, contact information again for our keynote presenter, uh, Jessica Alfont. You can see there, jessica.alfont at chhi.org. You can also reach out to our lead project coordinator uh, with Quality Insights, who is a key member of Healthy Connections as well, and um, that's Crystal Welch. And she can be reached at cwelch at qualityinsights.org. So again, we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Uh, your questions were great. Your feedback was excellent. We'll be uh, scheduling our next Healthy Connections quarterly webinar soon. So be looking for that coming up in uh, future editions of our morning memos and our Get Connected 
e-newsletter. So on behalf of everyone at Healthy Connections and Quality Insights, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope you have a great afternoon. Goodbye.